Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a snow boom Monday, December 14th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The models are in. Biggest snowstorm in years targets the Northeast. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now let's talk about snow on the ground. Northeast lower Michigan buried by Saturday snowstorm. Statewide totals show 15 inches topping the list. And more snow coming to the mitten. Major winter storm will slam the northeast this week and could dump up to 10 inches of snow on New York, Philly, Virginia, and Boston. Anywhere between 6 to 10 inches is expected to fall in Virginia and New York City. Significant winter storm on track to impact the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. It could be a beast. Let's check out the models here. And the warnings, major winter storm impacts the mid-Atlantic. And this, whoa, where do we go? Let me get it back. This not only includes snow up in this top map, but ice and sleet. Could be a tenth of an inch. A major winter storm is expected to impact portions of the mid-Atlantic New England this Wednesday and Thursday as a nor'easter develops and lifts up the mid-Atlantic coast. This is one of the models, similar to the one I've been showing for days but we'll go over all of them in a moment. Heavy snow is expected near and north of the I-95 corridor in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and Boston. Freezing rain and ice accumulations are expected in northwest North Carolina and across much of the southwest and central Virginia. Confidence is high that this winter storm will result in significant impacts, including travel disruptions, power outages across much of the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. And are you prepared? for significant ice accumulations. The first model we'll take a look at is the GFS model. And we'll walk that through. That is showing moderate to heavy snow in the west. Whew, take a look at that. But let's look at the northeast storm here. So there is a first event happening now in the mountains of West Virginia and up through Pennsylvania, the Catskills. And that takes you to Tuesday. And then here's your Wednesday into Thursday morning. So Wednesday night into Thursday morning, that storm is going to explode in West Virginia and move up the coast all day Thursday. Heavy snow in the GFS model predicted most snow, 16 inches in North Jersey, but a pummeling for Southeast Pennsylvania, a foot in most regions, hundreds of square miles. And that's the GFS. We'll come over to the GEM model. And this is showing the storm arriving Wednesday evening, Wednesday afternoon in West Virginia through Wednesday evening, quickly moving up through Pennsylvania and a strip up through the suburbs of all the major trifecta cities up here, all the way through Boston. This one's showing 18 to 20 inches, the big winner, southeastern PA. Hey, hey. And the final model we'll look at is the Icon, which has this storm moving north and beginning Wednesday afternoon, evening, Thursday morning there, and exploding up in the Catskill region. So those are the three models. You make the call. Heavy rain for southeast Monday. Major winter storm likely in the east by Wednesday. My call is the biggest totals are going to be North Jersey, southeastern PA, and Boston. So... This baby's going to bomb out. There might be some space weather to help it along, and it should be a good show. A storm tracking across the southern U.S. will shift to the southeast U.S. Monday. Heavy rain and thunderstorms are expected along the storm track with some snow over the central Appalachians. This is the quick whisper that goes over here and just dumps a few inches. Oh, yeah. And winter storm watches and warnings up for Virginia, West Virginia, Lots of eastern PA, and out here in Kansas, uh, northern Oklahoma and central Oklahoma and southeast of Colorado, as well as winter storm watches and warnings in Utah. So there's the outlook. Seismic update. We just had a boomer kicking off in the Norwegian Sea, 5.8. Other quick good note is in Chile, six-pointer at 100 kilometers. And the New Madrid is getting a little jiggy with a 2.8 in Dryersburg, Tennessee. He he. It looks like some things could be happening in Hawaii with the 4.4 just popping off. 
Other volcanic news, Etna Volcano had a spectacular strong eruption from the new southeast crater. Take a look at that. Here is video here. It's not, not so good, but we'll take a look at it. And this is an eruption yesterday, and then the report said that it calmed down. But a new report coming out from that region is showing an uptick uh, just recently. Uh-oh. So there it is erupting yesterday. And you can come over here and you see that later Etna, the activity decreased. But Strombolian activity here in Lewotol. But right here you can see just moments ago a new eruption at Etna to 15,000 feet. That's quite significant. So the earlier was a precursor to this boomer that just blasted off. Um, so we'll probably have some information about that eruption tomorrow. But let's see what they say right now. Volcanic ash plume rose to an estimated 15,000 feet altitude or flight level 150, moving 15 knots to the south. Aviation color code is red, so flights have been canceled. So this is quite significant, and a lot of people live around this volcano, so there could be some ash fallout from this, and we will be getting reports as they come in. The sun just kicking off another sea flare. We can confirm, based on the ghost x-ray flux, as we sit in KP0 for much of the last two days, and we all know what you're thinking, don't we? Yes, sex between ancient humans fundamentally altered perception. Now, this is an interesting read, and it talks about some genetics of Neanderthal, and specifically the gene SCN9A, which codes the protein NAV 1.7. Now, this is a pain receptor. And according to this information, Neanderthals uh, experienced much more pain than uh, Homo sapiens sapien. And some people still have the Neanderthal gene in them, and they have that same effect. They feel more pain than most people. So that's very interesting link genetically with Neanderthal. New material can store energy from, for this, from the sun for months. Photovoltaics much? If we're going to get better at powering the planet with renewable energy, what we're doing now is not going to work. Strip mining and destroying the entire planet to, to rip out lithium in third world countries and destroying all of the waterways, that's really not sustainable, is it? So, so none of this really is sustainable. Part robot, part frog. Yes, it's happened. Xenobots are the first robots made from living cells. If you're not disgusted, I am. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Xenobots are the first robots made completely of living materials. They're designed on a supercomputer running software that emulates natural selection. Algorithms determine possible effective tissue configurations for the Xenobot to perform a specific task, such as moving through fluids or carrying a payload. The most promising designs are sculpted with tiny forceps and fluids Oh my God. And cauterizing irons, like these little. <clears throat> then set free in petri dishes, where the specks of amphibian flesh live for a week before decomposing. There are no electronics involved. Behaviors are programmed entirely through the structural arrangement of the pulsating heart cells in a matrix of rigid skin cells. <laughs> oh. That's some crazy shit. Jupiter and Saturn will form a double planet. Yes, the Christmas star. For the first time since the Middle Ages. On December 21st, 2020, the solar system's two gas giants will appear closer together in Earth's night sky than they have been since 1226. Yes, you heard it. It's been quite some time. And we are going to be putting up an excellent show this evening on the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. So stay tuned for that. December 21st, 2020, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. I'll leave you a link to this uh, nice little PDF to get you started. Now let's talk about a stellar flare. Associated radio burst detected from Proxima Centauri. This is nearby, guys. This is only 4.244 light years away, and it appears as if a gigantic X 
500 flare, just blast it off the side of it. Is this the stellar wave coming? How long will it take for the wave to reach us if it's only 4.2 light years away? It's anybody's guess, read the paper. And if you didn't know about all of mainstream media being propaganda, well, read up on H.R. 5736, the Smith Mon Modernization Act of 2012, which made propaganda legal. Yes. And the first U.S. COVID-19 vaccinations are being stuck in arms right now. Are you picking up the propaganda? What will you do? Hope you got something out of the video. The vaccines are going in. And we're going out. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a world where we are now genetically modified. If you get the vaccine.